hope you enjoyed the sequence. It's all shot on the GoPro Hero 10. And in this tutorial, I show you how I get shots like that. So let's start directly with the first tip. And that is to make use of 5.3K 60 and 4K 120 resolution, because that allows you to have slow motion shots and speed ramping. And at the same time, you can crop into the footage to animate it. And that allows for really nice effects and you can be really creative with your shots. And Previous versions of GoPro cameras had that already, like they had higher frame rates, like 120p in 2.7K and 60p in 4K. But now you have these frame rates available in higher resolutions and that allows you to crop even more and therefore you can add more animation. At the same time, especially the speed ramping effect is really nice, what I use a lot in my videos because it makes everything look a bit more dynamic and you can also use it to transition into the other shot. But important is that you don't overuse this effect of speed ramping and slow motion because if you use it all the time it is not really present anymore. It's much better if you use it in combination with normal speed clips or even time lapses and so on. Because for example if you have a few normal speed clips and then you put a slow motion or even a speed ramp clip in there this effect becomes a lot more present and that really makes certain clips stand out. And if you want to know how to edit slow motion and speed ramping, there are many tutorials on YouTube. I don't want to make another video about that. So just type in speed ramping or slow motion plus the video editor you use on YouTube and you will find plenty of tutorials there. And another new feature of the GoPro Hero 10 is the nano coating on the lens. So water repels quicker and you don't get water drops on it if you put the camera into the water or you bring it under the waterfall or so and that allows for really cool shots especially with waterfalls because if you combine it with good sound design and the slow motion effects of this camera then you can actually get really cool shots as you see here. So use it for that, get cool water shots with this camera. And the GoPro Hero 10 also got better for time lapses because it can shoot 23 megapixel photo time lapses. And that is really close to cameras like the A7C here, which shoots 24 megapixels. So right now I'm doing a comparison here to see how the quality of both cameras compares because I always carry around two cameras, one to shoot my time lapses and the other one to get other shots while I shoot my time lapse. And of course, it always adds a bit more weight to my bag if I have to carry a second full frame DSLR with me. So if I can only bring my GoPro, that would really help a lot, especially if I want to go on hikes or so. And I will put both time lapses here so you can see the quality difference by yourself. But I was actually really happy with the quality of a time lapse that I shot recently on the GoPro Hero 10. So definitely use your Hero 10 more for time lapses. That always makes your videos more cinematic. And especially with the 23 megapixels, you have the same advantage as you have with 5.3K resolution because you can animate it more. You can really crop into 200% and it still looks good. And our next tip is a bit more general. It counts for every camera, especially if you use wide angle lenses. And that is to use your GoPro to capture more interesting angles. Because especially for travel videos, the mistake that I see many beginners do is to simply put the GoPro in front of them and capture the same angle all the time. And that always looks pretty amateurish. So what you can do to make that easy is to simply get low with your camera always. Because if you're a bit lower to the ground, there are always some options Objects around that you can put in the foreground what makes it look nicer and it also makes your subject like yourself or another person that you film or so appear bigger so for example here before we did this chicken shot here where we move the GoPro backwards and that's pretty interesting because you can see me in the background but you also see the chicken in the foreground it makes the shot look more dynamic before you saw the shot where I walked down the stairs and I put the GoPro under my feet that also looks pretty cool and I would not do that with my Sony a7S 3 really because I don't want to put the camera into the dirt but with a GoPro camera that's no issue so really use your GoPro more for interesting shots like that. 
And before we come to the next tip, let's talk about my GoPro Masterclass. Now, learning via YouTube tutorials is totally fine. I do that a lot as well. But the problem with that is always, especially as a beginner, that you probably don't know how certain shooting techniques and so on are called. And so you don't search for them and therefore you don't even know that they exist. And that's why it's good to have a step-by-step -step course that you can follow that teaches you everything, starting from the settings over shooting techniques, transitions, editing and also color grading because then you really learn everything even the stuff that you would probably not think about if you learn with YouTube tutorials. That's why I created the GoPro Video Masterclass so if that sounds interesting check it out I will leave a link to it in the description below and let's talk about the next tip which is to let the viewer feel like he's part of the action. And what I mean with letting the viewer feel like he's part of the action is that when we usually think of cinematic footage we think of all the these smooth b-wall shots that usually show the main character or what's around him or so and this is one part that is definitely cinematic but what we often forget is that also the rough parts of being with the character and also stuff like vlogging here is actually cinematic in its own because cinematic also means storytelling and letting the viewer feel like he's with you he is part of the action of whatever you're doing right now is in itself cinematic so i would say that it's a better approach to mix it a bit between those beautiful looking cinematic shots and some rough shots and vlogging to really tell the story so that you have some parts in your video that really feel like being with you where you vlog and you show what's happening right now even if it looks a bit amateurish but then you switch back to all these smooth cinematic footage and GoPro cameras are good for that and what I would suggest you here is to simply set the front screen on your GoPro to wide instead of that normal narrow view because then you see the whole angle that you cover and that helps a lot at first with vlogging to really position yourself right but also when you put the camera or the GoPro somewhere to really look if the framing is good and if you're positioned right in the frame. That's great especially about the GoPro Hero 10 because this, the front screen there is actually fluid while on the Hero 9 it's pretty laggy and that is a bit distracting sometimes so good that they did that on the GoPro Hero 10. Seems like it's starting to rain again, so we'll go down now. But let's also do some quick question and answer and also talk about the settings I use on the GoPro Hero 10. And questions that I get a lot is at first if you should use a gimbal with your GoPro Hero 10, Hero 9 and GoPros in general. And I must clearly say no. Since the Hero 7, I did not use gimbals with my GoPros because you don't need to. The stabilization is so good, especially now on the Hero 10, that there's just no need for a gimbal. So save your money, better invest in something else. And then the other question is ND filters. I use ND filters a lot, especially on my FPV drone, because with that motion blur, it makes your footage look really nice. But I would also say that it's not super important because the first three years where I run my YouTube channel, I never used ND filters, I always used high shutter speeds and it worked. Like people never complained, it was totally fine. And that's why I think if you're really just starting out, don't really care about ND filters or shutter speed at first, just crank up the shutter speed or use your GoPro to automatic shutter. It's totally fine, but later, if you want to make your videos better, then use ND filters. And ND filters that I can recommend are the ones from Freewell. I use them already with the Hero 9 all the time. Now I use exactly the same filters with the Hero 10. They always did a good job. And for settings, I did another video last week where I go really in-depth about it. So just check that out here in the corner. But the most important settings are to keep the resolution high to 5.3K or 4K. Then use a flat picture profile because it gives you the highest dynamic range. And also keep the sharpness low because that looks more cinematic. And that's it here for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave me a thumbs up if yes and also subscribe.